So we've talked a lot in this course about proof of work versus proof of stake. Proof of work is the oldest, the original consensus protocol. It's coming up on its 10th anniversary. Uh, first went into production with Bitcoin back in 2009. And as a consensus protocol, it served us very, very well. Um, there have been a number of hacks and exploits that have been committed against various smart contracts and solutions written on top of the blockchain, but for almost a 10 year history with over half a trillion dollar market cap, no one's been able to successfully exploit proof of work itself, which really shows the security and the reliability of the protocol. However, there are some shortcomings and criticisms to proof of work that are now leading us to look at alternative consensus mechanisms like proof of stake. One of those is our transaction processing capability. On a good day, proof of work is capable of processing anywhere between 10 and 20 transactions per second worldwide. Uh, this may sound like a lot, but it still leaves us a wide gap to conventional processing powers, uh, something like Visa's payment processing network, which can scale up to over 70,000 transactions per second. So in order for blockchain to continue to be a successful solutions platform, we know that we're going to need to find other consensus mechanisms which allow us to scale up that transaction processing speed uh, into a range where we start to compete with conventional technology. There are also some other criticisms behind proof of work that are leading us to alternative methods like proof of stake. One of those is the idea of centralization. As you know from this course, one of the key tenets of blockchain is the idea of decentralization. That no one central authority, intermediary, or participant should ever have too much power or control in a blockchain network. What we're seeing right now with proof of work has, is an arms race um, where folks are competing with very, various specialized pieces of equipment, specialized hardware, specialized mining rigs in order to mine most efficiently. And this can be done most efficiently in large data centers where electricity is cheap. So right now, almost 80% of the processing power behind the Bitcoin network resides in six major data centers in mainland China. A lot of advocates and blockchain purists think that this is far too much centralization in one geopolitical region of the world. Um, so one way we aim to change that is through proof of stake, where we remove the work component of group consensus and we replace it with a very specialized form of gambling or wagering. The idea being that if we no longer require specialized hardware in order to come to consensus, we can allow anybody with any kind of device to participate in consensus. That may be you at home with an old laptop or a friend with a smartphone or a tablet or an iPad that sits on your night stand most days and doesn't get used. Uh, this allows for a much wider and more decentralized range of devices and potentially a much larger network size to participate in consensus. Um, so speed and the idea of decentralization are big drivers behind the move to proof of stake and we're going to see how well that works out. We'll see proof of stake finally go live in Ethereum later this year. Um, certainly with more blockchains to follow if it becomes a successful consensus mechanism. So when you hear the debate these days about proof of work versus proof of stake and you're trying to understand what do they mean and why are we looking at transitioning from one to the other, understand that we're just trying to overcome some of those big limitations behind proof of work, the consensus mechanism that has served us so well to date. We're trying to find consensus mechanisms that most importantly allow us to scale up to get our transaction processing power on par with conventional technology and we're also trying to remove some of the centralized aspects that we've seen form around proof of work. We talk about proof of work and proof of stake in much greater depth in other modules in this course. So if you're curious about the difference between them, how they work and what the actual implementation differences are, be sure to check out those other modules.